Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be giving our first look at the NFL slate for this coming weekend. I thought we did a pretty good job of identifying the top plays and the top teams and the top stacks for last week. And it actually worked out to be a lot chalkier than the industry would have had us believe. You know, from what I had heard, everything was going to be completely unpredictable. And yet you had Justin Jefferson and Saquon Barkley and, and Michael Pittman and and Travis Kelsey, and basically most of the top-owned guys ended up being the top scorers at their position. Um, it doesn't mean that, you know, you had to, all you had to do is pick the chalk to win the mill, you know, the Millie Maker, but these uh, projections were pretty close. You know, the industry got it, got it, <laughs> did a pretty good job of getting, uh, of predicting what was going to happen this past week, which was very, um, which was, that in and of itself was unexpected, you know, so. Um, we're going to continue on with this this idea that we're going to go with 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 the projections, go with expectations, and yet still have this idea that at least early in the season, it does become a little more it is a little more unpredictable than than later in the season because you have a lot less to go on. Um, also, week two, uh, this is going to be actually kind of an interesting take. Week two is also kind of known throughout the industry as the great overreaction week. Um, that whatever happens in the first week, people presume is going to happen in the second week. And everybody, you know, uh, and people go crazy about that. Well, I'm kind of of the belief that that the industry might be getting a little bit uh, too cute for its own good. And I, I believe that what happened in the first week is actually more important uh, than what people think. Um, you know, if you have a guy who all of a sudden out of nowhere, for lack of expectation, there was lack of expectation, that he would get a lot of carries and got a lot of carries. I'm, I'm going to believe that, you know, <laughs> um, I'm not going to just say, well, it's going to be overreaction week, so I'm not going to react to it. So in any case, all this is one way of saying that I do believe that the projections should be at least the starting point for how we analyze the slate. And then again, obviously roster construction and, and lineup construction um, and portfolio construction you know, makes it, you know, uh, this is what actually separates the men from the boys, the women from the men, the women from the girls, et cetera, et cetera. So let's just uh, get into it. And we have a similar type of uh, slate preview this week or slate overview in that there are a couple of games that do stand out or a couple of teams, I should say, that stand out over the rest. But the way I have it right now is I have three teams uh, at the top. And then I do have like a basically a seven-way tie for the for the pivot off of those three teams. So I do have on, on a on a twelve game slate, which means there's only twenty four teams to choose choose from. I do have interest in almost half of the teams, um, which is um, you know interesting. I guess uh, you have to follow me long enough to realize what all that means. I usually don't have that many teams that I'm interested in, um, but this week I do. I have three top ones and then seven others that I'm willing to consider as pivots. So let's just go game by game and I'll identify what those teams are and individual plays along the way. So perhaps the uh, one game I'm not particularly interested in from a stacking perspective is the Carolina and the Giants uh, game because uh, a lot of the offense is going to be coming from the two running backs and they both project to be some of the best plays on the slate. Um, I actually have them ranked one, two, <laughs> as the two best running backs on the slate and, and which, which brings up a, a, it's a kind of an interesting statistical philosophical and, you know, whatever uh, question right off the bat is that do you, can you, should you play up opposing running backs together in the same line? Um, and this is uh, you know, this is a test of where the industry is at with respect to correlation nowadays, because within the last couple of years, you know, it was considered, you know, anathema right? <laughs> to, to, to play running backs from the opposite teams. And the idea being that, you know, you, you just, it's only going to be one running back that's running the game out. It won't be both of them. But I do believe that with, with the way the NFL is right now with, with running backs taking so much work out of the backfield that you can have shootouts and still get the running backs quite a bit of work, you know, especially guys like McCaffrey who are going to be needed to, get the ball in their hands on the comeback. And as we've seen, Barkley is pretty much the entire Giants offense. So they're going to get the ball in his hands as well. So to get, to get right to it, yes, I would consider playing Barkley and McCaffrey in the same lineup if, uh, if, if they'd come to that. Um, I don't have any interest 
in, in much else from this game. Um, I, I don't think that it's going to be a particularly high scoring game. I think that the receiving car is going to take a back seat to the running backs as far as where the offense is going to come from. Um, and uh, that's kind of where I'm at in this game. So this is not one of those games that I'm going to be attacking. Um, and sticking with my, uh, with my New York teams, uh, I think that the, the Jets Cleveland game is another one that is there. Ne neither team is even making it into my top 10. Um, and it doesn't take a genius to, to see why. I mean, neither offense is particularly adept at doing much of anything. It's uh, Cleveland's defense is very strong and the Jets defense is actually pretty passable as well. And I think this is going to be a low scoring game without a lot of fantasy output. Um, if anything, you could maybe make a case for Nick Chubb, but you know, as you saw last week, uh, you had Kareem Hunt getting two touchdowns, you know, on 11 for 46, including four targets, you know, four receptions. So to play a guy like uh, Nick Chubb, Seems a little, uh, a little, a little kooky to me. Um, and Kareem Hunt, I mean, I, this is this is this is one of those things that I spoke about earlier. Is about you know, don't believe what you saw last week, but I mean, it's kind of hard to ignore that the guy got for openers eleven rushing attempts and four targets, four receptions. And this guy's in there, you know. So I don't know if I could play him at sixty six hundred, but. I don't think it'd be the worst play I've made uh, <laughs> in my DFS career. So for me, this this uh, this this game is probably a pass. Probably not going to get too much of anything. Um, not to be a pain in the neck, but it doesn't look like um, the New England Pittsburgh game is particularly interesting either. It's interesting in. Uh, I was looking at the Najee Harris. Uh, he is going to play this weekend against the Patriots, so that questionable tag is kind of off the off the table. Um, with the exception of maybe Najee Harris, this is just another game, which is a big old big old defensive struggle. I think I, I'm not particularly interested in much of anything from this game. So with me saying I come right out of it and saying I like ten different spots, we're through three games and six spots, and I like none of them. So it's. <laughs> Um, there you have it. Uh, not a lot of that in this game. Moving on, though, you have Miami and Baltimore, and this is the first one that I think is going to be this uh, a nice little sneaky pivot um, off of the top three teams. Uh, as a matter of fact, I like both sides of this game with respect to offense. I think this game could shoot out. I think that the very least, you know, uh, it's going to score. I think I do think there, there'll be more points scored. Maybe I don't want to say than the total indicates that's, that's me claiming I know a little bit more than Vegas, but I do think that, that this game is going to be low owned. Um, I hope it, I hope so. Cause I, I definitely want to play some of this. The, the easiest place for me, I guess, to, to find the, uh, to find the, uh, the, the, the production is on the Miami side. I mean, Miami, if you played, say, Tua with um, with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, I mean, I think this is um, – I, I think this is uh, – I think this is pretty strong. Uh, I don't think a lot of people are going to go this route, and I think that's a, that's, that's pretty, that's a pretty strong play. Um, in addition to that, uh, on, on the Baltimore side, as usual, it's a little hard – to get the um to get the production right, you know, but you could start with Lamar Jackson. <laughs> he could he could certainly score just a, a a carload of points on his own. You know, he could score a bunch of ru rushing touchdowns and things like that. So um, the other thing is that you know who you really do know who the best receiver on on Baltimore is, and that is the tight end. <laughs> that is uh, is Mark Andrews. So you can actually start off with a with a nice, you know, uh, Lamar, Mark Andrews pairing, run it back with Tariq Hill and, and or Jalen Waddell and, and and have a pretty cool little low own, I think. Maybe it's not going to be that low own, but that's what I'm seeing right now. Um, uh, so for me, it would be, and you could also play Rashad Bateman. I would not chase the Devin Duvernay, but you play Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, Rashad Bateman, and then just from 
make sure I get these right. And the Miami side, you play Tariq Hill and and their Jalen Waddle, and you are um, and uh, you are off to the races uh, in, in a pretty low owned spot. All right, so moving on, uh, I didn't like, by the way, I didn't like particularly any of the running backs in this game. Uh, Indianapolis against Jacksonville. It's another one which I really don't have too much interest in from a, a stack perspective. I will say that that Jonathan Taylor uh, continues to, you know, he, he's got to be in play. I mean, he's really, really expensive, I mean, to say the least, but – He's going to also probably be low on, right? Don't, wouldn't you imagine that most people are going to play either McCaffrey or Barkley? And he he gets just all kinds of work, Jonathan Taylor. Um, even when they were down by like two scores, they kept on feeding him the ball. So uh, there, there was kind of a question of, are they going to just work him to death or are they going to kind of preserve him a little bit? The answer is they're going to work him to death. Um, so uh, I do like that. With respect to the receivers, where did they price Pittman this week? Did they did they juice him up a little bit? Is that why I'm not really getting to him? Yeah, they moved him up to 6,700, which, which for me was enough to kind of get me off of him this week. Um, at least, at, listen, at least at first, at first glance. Um, um, so for me, just maybe Jonathan Taylor as a low owned play. Um, that now, as usual, there are receivers that you can play kind of as one-offs. I'm looking through them. Um, uh, I'm not really getting to them in this game though. Like, why am I not getting to any Michael Pittman? Am I just not projecting that game for some reason? No, he's just not showing up as one of the better plays. It's the best I can describe it. So, um, all right, moving on. Tampa, New Orleans. All right, so here we go. This is a, this is really tricky for me because, on the one hand, I have respect for the Tampa off, uh, for for the New Orleans defense. Yet I'm getting this Tampa in my uh, in my runs. The, the pro one of the issues with Tampa is that boy, oh boy, do they want to play slow? <laughs> they really do. Uh, they which leads me to probably I don't want to say the best play because this obviously he's not as good as these other guys, but. Fournette is going to show up as a pretty good play. Um, they, they, he's obviously clearly the lead running back. Um, I just, just can't get used to it. I can't get used to putting him on the same level as guys like Barkley and McCaffrey and guys like this. So I don't know if I'm actually going to do it, but he is, he is showing up as at least top five or six running back on the slate. Um, but maybe that's being down at sixth is, 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 is weak enough that I might not have to play him all that much. Um, but what I do like is 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 Tom Brady, Mike Evans, and Julio Jones. I mean, Julio Jones, I guess, is has found the fountain of youth, I guess, or the fountain of Brady. Um, he they were they were they were targeting him, and he you know he was uh he was doing pretty well. Um, he actually I think he had a drop. There was another big play he could have made, and and Tampa really they didn't even show their cards in that game. I mean, he they just they ratcheted that thing down. Once they had the lead over Dallas and looked like Dallas couldn't do anything, they really just ran that clock out. And Tampa was just kind of just basically trolling them like the whole second half. Um, the Saints, boy, oh boy, everybody, everybody was really uh, so excited about playing, about finally getting a chance to play Jameis Winston in fantasy. And uh, I don't know, man, he kind of disappointed as far as I was concerned. I mean, they, they the only reason he really got these yards later was because they were down two scores and they had to try to come back and throw a lot. Um, th there was a lot of, there was a couple of Tyreek Hill plays. He's certainly still part of the offense. Um, I don't know if I want to play much of anybody against Tampa's defense either. Um, so it's, it is a weird spot. You know, I, I think Tampa is kind of a, kind of interesting. Um, I don't know exactly how they're going to do it, though. I mean, you have to think that New Orleans, first of all, can keep this game close. And they will. I mean, New Orleans at home. When's, what, what, they have to. Keep, they're going to keep the game close, um, especially after that last game. I mean, they they were they were in danger of getting run out of the building in Atlanta. 
Um, so maybe that woke them up a little bit and they came back, they got, they got a little bit of a breathe a sigh of relief and Tampa basically won their game in a tuxedo. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe New Orleans, you get a better game wide performance, especially in their home opener, you know, Brady coming for New Orleans home opener. I mean, I think this could be competitive and this games does kind of shoot out a little bit. Um, uh, I do like the Tampa side and, and, you know, that's the case. Maybe we should play some of these, some of these saints guys, you know, Mike, Michael Thomas had a big week last week. Um, uh, Camaro is, I think just okay. Um, we didn't even have a chance to see the, um, the guy everybody wanted to play the, um, I don't know what Lave do after all that. He did get three targets. Not exactly the A dot we were looking for. He had a 20 yarder, a couple of short ones. So he remains sort of in play, I suppose. Um, but yeah, uh, I think this game is, is, is a little bit sneaky. Moving on, uh, Washington, Detroit. Um, yeah, I kind of like this a little bit. Uh, Detroit, I thought was underrated and, and they, listen, they, they fell behind Philadelphia and, and, and there was obviously some issues. They couldn't stop them, but they can, they can, they can score. I mean, Detroit has weapons. They have DeAndre Swift. They have ASB. Uh, it's uh, St. Brown. Um, so, you know, uh, they have TJ Hawkinson. I really like that a lot. Um, I think that they're going to play. They're, they Listen, they play hard all last year, and they're going to continue to play hard this year. And I think that this game could be sort of sneaky too. So I like the Detroit side more, that being um, uh, Jared Goff. Amon's Amon or St. Ross St. Brown and TJ Hawkinson. You need a run back. I suppose Terry, you know, Terry McLaurin certainly makes sense. And obviously this, uh, this Jahan Dotson showed out, right? Um, well, sure. Five targets, not much, but three receptions and two touchdowns. That's good. Right. So um, you can play him. You can play McLaurin. Um, you can go back to Gibson if you want to, but I think this, this game definitely has some potential. And none of these, by the way, are the top three three B teams yet. All these are basically pivots. Seattle, San Francisco, um, not for me. Uh, I don't really have much in that game. Although you got to watch the the uh, you got to watch whether Jeff Wilson becomes popular or how he projects. I currently don't have him as a good player or anything like that. And he's been um, he's been known to fail as chalk before. Uh, and you might get one of those cases where Debo Samuel lines up as a running back more often uh, than Jeff Wilson owners would like. So for me, I think this game is probably going to be low scoring. You have Geno Smith who, you know, listen, props to him, man. I mean, he played a nice game in his home opener with R Russell Wilson coming back to town with all that stuff. Um, and they still have weapons, right? They still have Lockett and, 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 uh, and DJ Metcalf, but, I think San Fran coming off the loss is going to put up a good defensive effort here. And I think this game is going to be pretty slow. Uh, I don't play Trey Lance. I just don't do it. Uh, show me one good game and then I'll be more than happy to consider him. Um, and uh, I'm not really getting too much of Debo today. It's well, I shouldn't say that. Well, let's, 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 let's hold off on this for a second. Let me, let me take a look. I would love Kittle to be back for me to play Trey Lance. Um, that's what I would like. I don't know if I could, I don't know if it's that easy, but let me see something. Let me see how bad San Francisco really is. If I played this, I would actually play Trey Lance with Samuel with Ayuk. That's what I would do. Problem is, I didn't think Seattle's defense was that bad. I don't know if Seattle, if San Francisco really put up these types of numbers given their, the way they play, you know, um, so I'm going to hold off on San Francisco for now. I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say yes. I'm going to hold off on this game uh, and, and nothing on the running back side. All right. So Rams Atlanta, this is the first one. I mean, the Rams are going to show up as one of the top three plays. Um, they're, you know, making their home opener after uh, I would actually say a reasonable performance against Buffalo. I mean, they were, they were tied in pretty much in the first half of the first half and Buffalo is just rough. I mean, it's just kind of rough to, 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 to go with them. Rams do play a little bit too slow for, for, for my liking, but 
I think that that Atlanta's defense is they sh- as Atlanta's defense showed in the second half in that New Orleans game. I mean, you can score on them, and I think the Rams are going to you know big bounce back spot, and they want to flex a little bit, if, whatever they can flex. I mean, they have a very very rough schedule this year, so they need it. They need to play well in these games where they're big 10, 12 point favorites, and I think they are going to. Um, which means they're going to they're going to be going back to the same guys. They're going to be playing. You're going to play Cooper Cup. You're going to play. By the way, as, as gross it is because everybody burned everybody last week. You're going to have to play Allen Robinson um, and and Darrell and what's his name and uh, Henderson. I mean, Henderson is basically uh, basically the man, and they uh, they just kind of showed that in in the. In the last start, so so Daryl Henderson rates to be one of the top uh, value running backs on the slate, um, and the entire Rams offense is in play. Um, did I miss any guys from the Rams offense? Um, no. Uh, well, Higby. So Higby's in play too. So Cup, Robinson, Higby, and then if you want Atlanta run backs, you got to. I mean, I think there are two guys. There's Cordell Patterson. Uh, He's picked up right where he left off. I mean, he had 22 carries, not to mention five targets. I mean, this is this is like legit. I mean, this is uh, I would not second guess this. I think that I think that Quirrell Patterson is I mean, it's probably the most underprojected guy on the slate. I mean, if you want to, if you think about it, I mean, what, why don't they? Why does anybody believe this? He's not. Who would have thought he had 20 rushing attempts? If anything, they thought he'd be kind of like a trick play guy who just take stuff out of the back and we got 20 freaking rushing attempts. I mean, what, what, what has the guy got to do to become the best play on the slate in six K he's the top running back. He also gets backfield work, work out of the backfield in a probably high total game where they're going to have to come from behind as well. I mean, this is, how do you not play this? So this is like the easiest play to make, you know, you just game stack this game with the Rams, with the, with, with, um, with Patterson and, 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 um, and pits, and then you're 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 off to the races. I think it's probably going to be like uber chalk, but you know that's 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 the way it looks to at least on this uh, this occasion. Um, okay, uh, Arizona against Las Vegas, as it's going to be the case probably the whole well at least until further notice. Um, the uh, Vegas is going to excuse me. Um, Arizona opponents are going to be in play. I mean, they just Arizona gives up yards. They play fast. And that's that's a that's a recipe for big fantasy points. And and this is no exception. I, I have Vegas listed as one of the top three teams and I have Arizona listed as kind of a pivot. So this makes this a very, very viable game stack. Um, so just the kind of, you know, Vegas you could play and I don't know why um whatchamacallit people didn't play him that much but 17 targets perhaps i mean if that's going to be the deal uh this is going to look like probably a a a bad price at some point at 8600 so i'll 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 start playing this right now marquise brown took him a while to get there but he got there for arizona and i don't like to play Hunter Renfro for the from Vegas, but he's the next guy. What I do like to do is play Darren Waller. So you play the uh, Carr with 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 Renfro and Adams, and then you play Marquise Brown uh, on the way back um, for Arizona, and you're in good shape. Uh, James Conner kind of did he disappear? I mean, ten rushing attempts. He did have six targets, but didn't really do too much with them. Um, I think it's going to be a similar game to a lot of Arizona games. I think it's going to be a lot of possessions, and I think it's going to be points. And uh, the one that difference this week, by the way, is that I think Rondell Moore is going to be back. All right, so that 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 could be something. So that's the difference. So if Rondell Moore is back, uh, pretty much day to day, if he gets in at forty one hundred, then it's game stack city. Then you play the vague, you play, um, you play Carr with both those receivers. You all three, not all three of them, two of those three, you run it back with both uh, Marquise Brown and um, and and uh, Rondell Moore, and you play some with one of them, and and you maybe a couple of Connors, and this is a very, very viable game stack. Another 4 p.m. shootout um, alongside of the Rams game. 
Then you have Houston against Denver. And to me, this is another uh, this is another sneaky one. I don't know how particularly sneaky it is. So, so Denver played uh, their first game uh, at at uh, at uh, Seattle, um, and I actually thought they weren't bad. I mean, people people were all over this or whatever. First of all, the coaches made a bad decision at the end of the game. Whatever. I, th- I thought Wilson did a really really good job finding these receivers, and I think both those guys, Sutton and Judy, are studs. And I think that Wilson is going to have a lot of success with them this whole season. So um, Houston played a pretty, pretty nice game against Indianapolis. Um, but in the end, they gave up yards to, you know, yards in the, in the second half when they shouldn't have, I think Denver can, you know, they're going to be having their home opener. They're going to want to get on the board. And, and I think they're going to put it to Houston. I think that Wilson's going to have a big, big game in his home opener. I think he's going to get, get multiple touchdowns to Judy and, um uh and Sutton and I think that this is a really really good spot so I re- I re- like them a lot and if you want to run it back um I don't know it was was uh what's his name uh Brandon Cooks visible in this last game yeah he had 12 targets and let's go so that's what you do you play you play those Denver Wilson with those two dudes you run it back with with what's his name with Cooks and then you're and you're off you know uh, running back, I I definitely think that Javante Williams is the dude. Um, although it was kind of hard to say because they were basically coming back most of this game. But but you look and he had twelve targets, you know. Um, and this is another piece to this. So so you you can play Wilson with 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 Javante Williams as well. Um, this is uh the more I'm thinking about this, the more I really really like this this is going to have to be popular eventually. Right. Let me look and see, let me see at least ownership like for now, what it looks like. Um, yeah, I mean, some, but not much. I don't know. Man. I, I really hope that, I really hope that, that everybody piles in this Vegas and this Rams game. I will, I will do this. I will do the, I will do the Russell Wilson with all these Denver guys. I think, I think they are going to have a, a good season. I think, you know, it was a tough, I really was kind of a weird, tough spot for them in Seattle. That was a lot of pressure and, uh, and they almost won anyway. So anyway, that's what I think about that. Uh, Dallas Cincinnati. The only thing I will say about the Dallas Cincinnati game, because Dallas lost their quarterback is that you're going to get probably the, one of the chalkier defenses I may have ever seen uh, on this slate. Um, you have Cincinnati who was, I guess, priced before and they must've been, Price before Dallas lost its quarterback in the night game, um, and they're twenty two hundred against a, a zero quarterback, so they're going to be extremely popular. Um, I will say though that you know the chances that Dallas turns turns Cooper Rush loose is very slim. Uh, I think that they're going to pound the rock as much as possible, and. I also do think that that they are going to keep this competitive. Um, the Cincinnati that Cincinnati game was pretty weird, um, and I think Cincinnati is going to play well. But I think that Dallas is going to keep it competitive. I think that, that that teams do this all the time when they lose their quarterback. They at least for the first couple of games, the rest of the team does pick up the slack. And I think that they are going to attempt to pound the rock with either or or both uh, Elliott and and Pollard. So. Um, I think those teams, either of those guys could be kind of elite, like GPP freaking flyers, you know? Um, the problem is, I mean, it does look like a legit timeshare. I mean, uh, what's his name? Uh, Elliot had 10 carries and Pollard had six. But Pollard was six for eight, you know? So maybe, you know... That, that that Elliot could be one of those self-correlating guys that if he gets off to a good start somehow, um, they continue to ride with him. And you want someone to win the slate that no one's going to play? Uh, how about Z- how about Ezekiel Elliott? Uh, on the other side of the ball, um, I don't. I thought I was going to get. Oh, I I did. Right. So Cincinnati is the other one. So Cincinnati is the is the of the other of the three teams between the Rams and Vegas, you know, so you have a team that's a six and a half point favorite in, in a good, in a, in a dome 
Um, again, it's kind of a defense that might seem suspect. And with big, with big play receivers, big, big targets, you're going to, you're going to get these guys show up. And so you have Burrow, you have Chase. What's interesting is the T Higgins situation. Uh, he's making good progress. He'll be limited, but he'll play. So the problem here is, again, is, is if you play Cincinnati, that where's your run back? You know, um, I, I can't play any of these receivers in Dallas with Cooper Cup. I can't do it. Uh, Dalton Schultz. I mean, so that's the issue is you could play Cincinnati for a blowout. And obviously you can include Joe Mixon in that, in that mix. Right. So if in fact, Cincinnati does just, just take it to Dallas and, and everybody does what everybody's supposed to do. Right. And they play Mixon with the, with the Cincinnati defense. Right. Uh, that That's something you could do. You could do a full onslaught with, with play Burrow with uh, what's his name with, uh, with Chase and Mixon and Higgins and the defense. That's possible. Um, I don't see it. I don't see it working out that way. Whatever it is, just uh, again, this is my instinct. I, I think Dallas does play better. As I say, they couldn't play worse. Um, and I think they do try to pound the rock. And if they can have any success doing that, they're going to continue to do that. And uh, um, so, yeah, so those are my takes. My takes are you can certainly play Cincy. Cincy. Um, they they rate as one of the top three. But I think there there are run back issues in this game. Um I think a ridiculous play to make, which I might just do, is something like Ezekiel Elliott. <laughs> what a horrible play. But I might. So just kind of in summary, um, uh, Rams, Vegas, and Cincy rate to be my you know the three top projected plays. Um, and the Rams and Atlanta just stack really, really nicely, as does Vegas. But then there are others, you know, Zona, Baltimore, Tampa, Denver, San Fran, Miami, Detroit. I think all those are, are, are neat little pivots. Um, as far as defenses go, as I mentioned, Cincinnati rates to be just an insanely good play, but they're going to be so highly owned. I, I really advise you guys to not play 20% owned defenses, and they are certainly going to be that. Um, my, some other defenses I'm looking at are Miami, the Giants, the Bucks. The Niners, those those are the my next rated uh, defenses. So that's a good start uh, for this week. I think we'll come back either again with Brody on Friday or certainly Sunday uh, for for a live show, and uh, that'll do it. So good luck this week.